Hi folks, this is yet another video on how to solve linear systems, okay? And you get some fairly complicated problems with linear systems where you have to figure out all kinds of details that would be normally kind of difficult to solve. But these linear systems, using elimination, substitution, or graphing, they tend to help us get the answer fairly quickly compared to any other method. So anyway, I just want you to know that there are many videos that I am now making on linear systems and this one is focusing on money problems. <laughs> Don't we all have that? No, just kidding. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to focus on money problems. Maybe you already know about my other videos. Please feel free to watch those too because they can help you do mixtures or distance time problems or just how to solve a linear system in general. Okay? These are all real life type questions and we're going to start with this situation here. We have a coin, bo the coin box of a vending machine contains half as many quarters as dimes. So we're going to have to turn this into some kind of an equation, okay? That means that there are, there are more dimes than there are quarters, okay? So if you took half of the dimes, okay, if you took half of the dimes, and we could say somewhere let d equal dimes, but I'm just kind of speeding things along here. We're going to assume d is dimes, and I'm of course I'm going to use the letter q for quarters, okay? So if we took half of the dimes, that would equal how many quarters we have. So there's our first equation right there, okay? That was our first hint they gave us. If the total value of the coins, so this is the number of coins right here, over here is the number of coins, and over here will be actual money, like what they're worth. Now, a quarter is worth 25 cents, for those that don't know, and uh, a dime is worth 10 cents, okay? So let's think about that. If the total value of the coins is $22.50, how many dimes are there? Wow. So all we have to do is come up with an equation here. So if a quarter is worth 25 cents, I'm going to write that as a decimal. 25 cents would be 0 0.25, so it's 25 cents for every quarter that there is, plus 10 cents, or 0 0.10, or 0 0.1. If you multiply that by the number of dimes, I'm going to move that over. Thank goodness I can do that. I didn't have to erase it. We would get $22.50 in total. So this one here, this line here is about money, or the, what it's worth, and over here we're talking about the number of quarters and dimes. We can let them work together to answer this question. Now if Q is equal to one half D, all we have to do, wherever we see Q, which is right there, we can literally just write one half d right there, and then we'll have only one variable, which will be the letter d, and we'll be able to solve this thing. So let's figure that out right now. It would be 0 0.25. Now instead of q, I'm going to put a bracket and write one half d. Okay? Plus, let's just write everything else just like it was. All right. So here we go. If we were to multiply 0 0.25 times 1 half, it's a lot like it's a lot like saying let's just divide by 2, but you can do it on a calculator and and if you do, you will come up with 0 0.125d plus 0 0.10d is equal to 22.5. This is nice because now we just have one variable that we have to solve. These are actually like terms. They can go together. So we can add up this number and this number, and if we add them up, we get 0 0.225 d, okay, and that still equals 2250. We're almost down to the final answer here. Okay, in order to get d all by itself from algebra, we've learned that you just have to divide both sides by 0 0.225, okay? And when you do that, if you divide both sides by 0 0.225, or 2250 divided by 0 0.225, you will get 100. 
Now what does that mean, d equals 100? That means there were 100 dimes. Oh, and that's actually the answer we were looking for. How many dimes are there? What if they asked how many quarters there were? Well, that wouldn't be that hard because it says half of the dimes would equal the quarters. So we know that there are 50 quarters as well. There's 50 quarters, just in case they were to ask that question. And I don't know, what else? They could, they could have also said, how much of each amount of money do you have? Well, if you were to go uh, dimes, which is 100, and multiply that by 10 cents, that would mean there's $10 in dimes, and that would mean the rest of it, which would be $12.50, would be in quarters, 0 0.25 times 50 should be $12.50. Okay, and you can always verify that if you want. And writing an answer with a sentence is something math teachers really like for these kinds of questions. So don't forget to do that. Okay, let's move to a ne another question. And I think today, I think I'm just going to do two questions with you here. And hopefully that will help you with your own troubles that you might be having in uh, these kinds of problems in your math class. So here we have Ada. Ada has $4.80 in nickels and quarters. So here we are with nickels and quarters. Remember, a nickel is 5 cents, okay? And we're going to say N for nickels and Q for quarters. And once again at the top, you could say, let N be nickels. Let Q be quarters. Anyway, if she has six more nickels than quarters, how many of each does she have? Okay, let's start by thinking about that, about the number. Let's think about the number of coins we have here. If she has six more nickels than quarters. Okay, that means there are more nickels than there are quarters. In order for quarters to equal nickels, in order for quarters to equal nickels, we would have to have quarters plus six. We'd have to have Q, how many quarters there are, plus six, in order to equal how many nickels there are. That's, that's a bit of a confusing part right there, because sometimes people accidentally go Q equals N plus 6. But that's not true. N plus 6, that would make even more nickels. And it says right here, she has 6 more nickels than there are quarters. OK, I'll let you push pause and wrap your head around that if you want to. In the meantime, I'm going to carry on here. We're going to talk about, just like before, the value of what we have here. It's $4.80. That's going to be our value of money. And so we have nickels and quarters. So a nickel is 5 cents, or 0 0.05 nickels. Okay, So 0 0.05 times the number of nickels plus quarters are 25 cents, just like the last question, 0 0.25 quarters. If you were to multiply and then, and then add these up, you should get $4.80. We're trying to figure out how much of each does she have, how many nickels and how many quarters are there. Well, we have a system of linear equations here, and there's a few different ways to solve this. I'm going to use substitution right here. So n equals q plus 6. So wherever we see n, see it right there, we're going to put q plus 6 because it equals n. We can replace n with q plus 6. Let's try it. 0 0.05 multiplied by q plus 6. The reason why we're doing this is because we're going to end up with one variable. What that means is we're going to end up with q and another q. We're able to put things together because they're called like terms when they just are q's. We can't, have, we can't put q's and d's together. So let's do this. We're going to um, expand this situation here. So we're going to go 0 0.05 times q then we're going to go 0 0.05 times 6, so 0 0.05 times q, there we have it. And 0 0.05 times 6, if you multiply that, you get 0 0.3. And then I'm going to write down still what we have left over here. And that still equals $4.80. Okay. And let's see here. We're going to put these two together. 
Well, we know that this and this together, if we add them, we get 0 .0, 0 .0, a, a nickel plus a quarter is 30 cents, or 0 0.3. If you want to say 0 0.30, that's fine. And I'm going to subtract 0 0.3 here. I'm going to subtract this from 480 to bring it over here, which gives us 450. Hopefully that step isn't too bad because it's just algebra that we've looked at in the past, okay? We don't want to throw too much at you. And the last step is to divide both sides by 0 0.3. So divide both sides by 0 0.3. 450 divided by 0 0.3. Let's see here. Get out the trusty calculator. There we go. 450 divided by 0 0.3 is 15. Okay, so now we know we have 15 quarters and how many dimes? Let's see, let's look up here. So the dimes are going to be six more than the quarters, just like we wrote up here. So there's going to be 21 dimes and 15 quarters. And that's really all they asked here. How many of each does she have? Does it work out? Well, 0 0.05 times n, well, I can quickly find out with a calculator just to check. Um, <laughs> I wish I had room for this calculator. In fact, I'm just going to do it with the calculator uh, in my hand. Showing you the calculator is not good because it blurs out things. I'm going to go 0 0.05 times 15. That gives us 75 cents. So this is going to be 75 cents. Or I'm sorry, no, it's 21 dimes. 21 times 0 0.05. 21 times 0 0.05. That's a dollar five. So we have a dollar five in dimes, and we have 15 quarters. So 15 times 0 0.25, 375. So here's our dimes. Here's our quarters. If we add them up, we get four dollars and eighty cents. Now this step that I'm doing is unnecessary, but I'm just talking about it out loud so that when you're doing a test or an assignment, you can say, I, I know I got this right because it worked out beautifully. The answer kind of uh, describes, it kind of proves itself as you go through it. And you're able to actually tell if you got the question right without the teacher having to tell you. Just make sure you write a nice sentence at the bottom and say, there were 15 quarters and 21 dimes. You could even say, therefore, before you say all of that. Depends on your teacher. Some are much pickier than others in terms of how you answer. But being clear in math is a really important thing. And being able to tell your teacher exactly what your thoughts are is very important. And I know it's not always easy because sometimes math can be confusing. But once you get the hang of it, boy, it's pretty fun. And in this situation, it was pretty cool to end up getting $4.80, just like we were hoping. Well, I have said enough. I hope that you check out the other videos on linear systems, too, if that's the kind of unit you're working on. Good luck out there. Have a, have a good day.